Functions of behavior are very basic. You get attention from it. So if I want attention, I can get attention by doing any type of behavior that I want. If it happens to be aggression and I get attention from it, that's super cool. Let me give you an interesting example. Have a young man who's about 22 years old and he loves to grab women's breasts. He'll go to Walmart, it doesn't matter where he goes, he will go and he will just grab breasts. What do you think happens when he grabs someone's breast? Oh my God, what did you, who are, what are you doing? So, you know, he's all like, because everybody's looking at him. The function is gaining attention. That's simple. We have another individual who will eat, they don't have pica disorder, but will eat stuff they shouldn't eat, rocks, glass, nails. And what happens is, as people, what are you eating? What are you eating? He's like, because now they have attention. So with these individuals, what we do is we put them on a very simplistic schedule. And we tell the staff working with them or the individuals working with them, give them an interval schedule of five minutes of attention. They're like, okay, what do you mean? Every five minutes, hey, how are you doing today? I love your hair. Beautiful looking hair, it looks awesome. And then what happens to those behaviors? They drastically disappear because we found what the function was. Does that make sense? That's simple. Gaining tangible items. Ever taken someone to the store and were told that they could not have a piece of candy? And what happens to that individual when they don't get it? Scream, melt down, throw a tantrum, throw themselves on the floor. What eventually happens to most, not all? You got it. All right, if you're quiet, you can have one. <laughs> okay, I'm quiet. Next time you go to H-E-B or to Walmart or to Target, what happens in the candy aisle? You've learned to throw yourself on the floor and have a tantrum. So this way you get what you need. So indirectly, we don't realize it, but we're teaching these behaviors all the time. Sensory stimulation, visual auditory olfactory, staphory kinesthetics, proprioceptive. Some kids love to be on the swing. Love to be on the swing, right? We had one family that their son, very, very aggressive male, loved to go on to car rides. And it could be two in the morning, he would get mom and dad up and aggress, physically aggress and assault them if they would not get in the van and take him around the block for 20 minutes. This was happening, if I remember correctly, it's been a while, somewhere around 10 to 12 times a day at any given hour. So we, we went in and mom and dad said, we don't know what to do, the aggression is out of control, he's hurting his brothers and sisters, he's kicking the animals because he wants these car rides. We figured out that he loved to hear the wind on his ears. So what do you think we did? We had a swing put inside the living room to one of the big beams. We taught him to swing on the swing. Guess what happened to the car rides? Gone. No more issues. In the middle of the night, he wanted to get up. We made sure his environment was safe. He would swing on the swing and then put himself back to sleep. Remember, we're looking for functions of behavior when it comes to aggression. We want to know specifically what are we looking at that may be causing the behavior to take place. Ask yourself this question. Think about when you were young and you were with a really, really handsome young man or a really, really attractive young lady and somebody else hit on your handsome young man or your attractive young lady in front of you. Did anybody get a little flustered? Maybe a little jealous? Sure. What's the function of that behavior? Attention. Think about it. 
It's very simple. It's attention. Who was getting the attention, you or them? They were. And all of a sudden, you're sitting here going, well, wait a minute. I thought I was like, you know, your shining star. And now you're looking at another shining star. Uh, what about me? And the function was very simple. Very, very simple. When we deal with young, aggressive boys who have jealousy issues, we teach them how to function in this capacity because all it is is attention. And what we've learned is if the girlfriend holds the boyfriend's hand while interacting with another male, the jealousy goes down significantly. That simple. Just because attention is maintained. When it is removed, we see the jealousy and the aggression significantly spike. It sounds too basic, doesn't it? It sounds too basic. Try it. It works. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. But it works. Why do you come to work every day? You're like, because I don't have a choice. <laughs> I wish I was independently wealthy, but I'm not. Why do you come to work? Ask yourself this question. Imagine that your boss said this, hey, thank you so much for coming in today. I just want to let you know you are a rising star in our organization. You're doing an absolutely a fantastic job. Unfortunately, we ran out of money. So we need you to come in continuously as you are today and continue to work on your projects, okay? If we need you to stay a little bit over 40 hours, I apologize, we'll try to keep you at 40. How many of you guys would go back? And not get paid. No, I'm sorry. By the way, your benefits are gone too. Sorry. How many of you would go back? Now, some of us may be independently wealthy. That would be nice. But if you're not, why wouldn't you go back? It serves a simple function, a simple purpose. Escape, attention interactions. This one's fun. Actually, um, my wife taught me this lesson. It was really kind of cool. Uh, and I didn't realize I was doing this. Uh, and she called me out on it very clearly. Should have kept her away from my textbooks. So I'd come home, I'd have a long day, and I'd forget, you know, to put the pillows on the sofa or to do the dishes or take the trash out. So I'd come in and, you know, you guys know, you open the door, you walk inside, and you're like, hey, hon, hi, I'm home. And they give you that look. And you're like, oh, God, it's going to be a long night. You just know it's going to be one of those, right? So I would walk in and, you know, hey, hon, hi, how are you? She's like, hey, um, you saw, oh, I forgot to get something at HEB. I'll be right back. And she's like, really? Yeah, I'll be right back. So I leave and I'd go to H-E-B. She counted the H-E-B receipts that I had, where I would go and buy gum, <laughs> popsicles, and I averaged about three times a week going to H-E-B and coming home with one item. Gum mints was my favorite one. And I realized, and she pointed out to me, that I was escaping that behavior. When I knew I was going to walk into an, a moment of intensity, I used an escape contingency to go to HEB. So she got smart. She says, okay, I'm not going to let you escape, and I'm not going to let you avoid the situation. So the next time I came home, she says, I said, oh, I got to go to HEB. And she says, great, because I need some things too. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, now she's going to be in the car with me. I'm done. I was no longer able to escape or avoid the situation. Aggression does that. John, I need you to sit over here. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down, calm down. Call somebody else so they can help. All right, let's go in the hallway. Let's go to the cool down area. Let's come over here. Let's relax. All right, are you better now? 45 minutes later. Is John still sitting over here? Where we originally asked him to? No, John just got a lot of attention, a lot of reinforcement for being aggressive. And guess what? John's going to become more and more aggressive. Does that make sense how that works? Because we're reinforcing the avoidance or the escape 
from the situation. That can be very, very dangerous. If you want to manipulate that situation, if John gets aggressive, what needs to happen at the end of that scenario? He needs to come back and still sit where you requested him to sit. That has to be the end game. You have to maintain that instructional control. If you don't, that escape or that avoidance contingency continues to escalate, escalate, escalate. And when that happens, you lose instructional control over the situation. A lot of people talk about positive reinforcement um, and they talk about giving edibles, candies, cookies, you know, if you give them chocolates all the time, you know, that's just, that's bribery. That's not behavior management, that's bribery. And to a certain point, I actually agree with them. Here's the challenging part. There are four different types of, of uh, reinforcement contingencies that exist, or two, and then two punishment contingencies. The thing with edibles is edibles are the start, and most people forget that. Whenever you shape or create a new behavior, you find the highest, most valued reinforcer for the individual, and you build your plan based upon that. Your goal, efficacious clinical goal, is to remove the edibles and create socially contingent reinforcement that they are gonna contact within the natural environment. That's your goal. So, hey, good job, pat on the shoulder. Way to go, high five. Those are the things that are gonna reinforce the need. What happens when the Spurs make a basket, a three-point shot, and LeBron James has just made a slam dunk before? What do we do? We get up and we cheer, and we start yelling and screaming, right? And the people around us are like, yeah! Everybody else is doing that, I gotta do it too. Because it's reinforcing. Those are social contingent reinforcements. If they make a slam dunk, the Spurs make a slam dunk, we don't get up, all right, everybody here, have a piece of pizza. Here you go, here's a piece, here's a piece, here's a piece. <laughs> that would not be functional. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. And people forget that. So think about that for a second. Positive reinforcement is not good. A lot of people get positive reinforcement mixed up with good. Positive reinforcement means you add something to the environment to increase behavior. So if I want you to continue to go to, go to conferences and make yourself a better person, more intelligent, and I add a Louis Vuitton purse to your repertoire of purses, that is adding a stimulus that hopefully is going to increase your behavior of going to conferences. It doesn't mean that it's good or bad. If I take away a stimulus, is it gonna add or reduce behavior? It's gonna actually increase behavior. See, this is where it gets a little confusing. I know, you're looking at the board going, hold on, wait a minute. Is there a quiz after this? <laughs> when you take away a stimulus, if you go outside today, right now, we're like, okay, field trip, we're going outside, and it is storming like it was a few days ago, and you have no umbrella. If I hand everyone umbrellas and you open it, what have you taken away? You've taken away the rain getting on your body. What is the likelihood of you requesting an umbrella next time you come to a conference and someone says, all right, field trip, we're gonna go outside and do an experiment. You're like, should I take an umbrella? That is going to increase the likelihood of your behavior. Remember, reinforcement always means the behavior goes up. Here's where we get confused. Punishment means the behavior goes down. If you look at 40 years worth of clinical studies when it comes to punishment, you will find that punishment is temporary and not long-lasting and tends to increase 
the intensity of that behavior that you are attempting to punish. Let me give you an example. Positive punishment means you add something to the environment. You are bad, I'm going to add a punisher to you by hitting you with a belt. Temporarily, that might work until they get to about 12 years old. I'll never forget it. My mom bent me over her lap. I think I was 12 or 13. She goes, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to whoop you with a belt. I said, go for it. So I bend over in front of her, and she was going to town, and I was just laughing at her until Dad got home. That was a different story. Temporary. Negative punishment. You know what? Because you did not do your homework, I'm taking away your Xbox. Some kids will say, okay. Well, I'm taking away your TV. Would you like my radio too? <laughs> Would you like the sheets on my bed also? At what point do you stop? It's temporary. There's a beautiful saying that says, negative attention is better than no attention at all. Keep that in mind because most often than not, you can take everything away to punish somebody. You can add a bunch of stuff into their environment to punish them. Like, I'm going to add your little brother in your room now. Now he's sleeping with you. Oh, cool. Now I get somebody to beat up on. Awesome. That's going to be a temporary fix. To truly change behavior, first you have to go through the extinction burst. You have to draw that line in the sand, stick to that line, go through the aggression that you have to go through, and then I promise you, over and over and over and over, it's been shown again, that behavior drastically drops. When it drops, then you start shaping and molding the behavior you want simultaneously. The biggest mistake that people do when working with behavior, pure behavior, is this. They want to remove a behavior from someone's repertoire, but they don't put something in its place to replace it. When you don't do that, it's kind of like saying, I'm going to remove your voice, but I'm not going to teach you how to communicate in another fashion. We always have to replace whatever we remove with something that is considered to be more functional.